For more than a decade, twice a year, our Kenyan colleagues have graciously hosted a small group from IHTC. And in exchange, several members of our Kenyan team have spent two or three weeks at IHTC, returning to Eldoret with new ideas that have taken root and flourished. For example, the nurses in the Ampath Hematology Clinic came up with a schedule of home and school visits, having seen this done at IHTC, to educate parents and teachers about their children with sickle cell disease or hemophilia. Hemophilia, as many of you know, is an inherited disorder where there is a lack of a protein that is needed for normal blood clotting, and this leads to a bleeding tendency. The areas of the body most vulnerable to bleeding are the joints, especially the knees and ankles that carry weight. And so bleeding into a knee joint is a fairly common occurrence in an active boy with hemophilia. Soon after the hemophilia clinic was started at MTRH, we encountered a young boy named Alex who has severe hemophilia. Due to repeated episodes of bleeding into his knee joints and lack of access to treatment, his knees had become stiffened and were stuck in a bent position. By the age of eight or nine years, he couldn't walk and his parents were carrying him everywhere. We were preparing for a visit to Eldoret when Tiffany, one of our physical therapists, secured a donation of a wooden mobility cart for Alex to help him get around his homestead. A wheelchair wouldn't work because of the bumpy terrain, and the effort required by Alex to propel it would cause him to have elbow bleeds. The mobility cart came in a large, very heavy box, but we managed to haul it through airports and customs with the rest of our luggage and supplies. When we arrived in Eldoret, our Kenyan team was already poised for a home visit. They planned to present the mobility cart to Alex and provide hemophilia education to his extended family. Alex's village isn't far from Eldoret. So, one sunny afternoon in Uisingishu County, we set off in an Ampath van with our trusty driver, accompanied by Dr. Chris Moniki, our wonderful medical officer in his very cool Subaru. I'm pretty sure I've heard taxi drivers in Eldoret identify him as the doctor with the red car. <laughs> when we reached the village, actually getting to the homestead involved negotiating a very tricky downhill dirt track off the paved road, but we arrived successfully, and Dr. Moniki wisely parked his Subaru at the top of the track. The nurses then gave a presentation on hemophilia to about 20 family members assembled on chairs on the grass outside. This was very well received, but as it was drawing to a close, the clouds gathered and it began to rain, so we dashed for shelter inside the house. A downpour that I can only describe as torrential continued for about 20 to 30 minutes, during which time we enjoyed refreshments and conversation with Alex's parents. Once the rain slowed to a drizzle, we emerged, only to find that the van was completely stuck in mud at the bottom of the track. Alex's dad marshaled some men from the village to assist. They appeared with ropes and tried to pull the van out of the mud. The driver got into his seat, and not wanting to be the old lady of the group, I got behind the van with Dr. Mwaniki and we started to push. The van began to move, but I hadn't reckoned with the tidal wave of loose mud that was churned up by the rear wheels. So by the time we reached a flat patch of grass at the top of the track, we were covered in loose mud from the waist downwards. Unfortunately, someone from our group captured the episode on camera. <laughs> In the photos, I looked drenched. I have this pained, rather desperate expression on my face. And I look like I'm wearing a pair of the thigh-high brown leather riding boots <laughs> that were fashionable in 17th century Europe. <laughs> Dr. Moniki was only slightly better off, and I truly believe he got behind the van as an act of chivalry because he didn't want me to be alone as the now mud-covered old lady of the group. <laughs> At this point, a little gang of children from the village were watching the proceedings from behind the Subaru, and they were giggling. So what's a Mazungu to do? I literally scooped handfuls of mud off the front of my pants and chased after them, 
slinging muddy missiles at the little rascals. They ran away, screaming with delight, but then came back for more two or three times until we were about to leave. There was no shortage of ammunition. <laughs> I rode back to Eldoret with Dr. Moniki and the Subarus. No one else wanted to sit with us. <laughs> Alex's dad assembled the mobility cart with no difficulty. It had a wooden bench seat, a little platform as a footrest, a wheel with a fat tire in the front, and two wheels in the back. It was operated by rotating two handles that were connected through an upright bar to the front wheel. It was exactly the right size for Alex, and he was thrilled. After we returned to Indiana, we received a video of Alex entering the house, transferring himself from the cart to the couch, reaching for the TV remote, and watching television without needing any assistance. Next came photos of Alex at school, surrounded by his smiling classmates, and a copy of his school report with his impressive grades. Alex has continued to excel at school and is now in high school. He has developed a talent for playing chess and is on his way to becoming a national high school chess champion. He has grown into a tall, slender teenager, but he still has bent knees. Fortunately, thanks to the dedication of Sam and Bunya, outpatient advocacy consultant and former program coordinator, it has been possible to locate an adult-sized mobility cart for him in Nairobi which Sam delivered to him recently, without getting stuck. <laughs> Alex will be traveling to Italy in the near future to participate in a chess competition. He is a gracious, graceful young man who has shown us, like our Kenyan colleagues, how a small idea may take root and flourish. <laughs>